Brutal Designs. Oi! This episode of the Brutal Reality Digest Online Podcast is brought to you by New World Designs, Vancouver's finest selection of retro-inspired fashion. Located on West Hastings Street, New World is locally owned and operated in just plain radical. They strive to bring the best in vintage reproduction brands such as Collective, Voodoo Vixen, Hell Bunny, Band Apparel, Betty Page Clothing, and more. They can also hook you up with accessories like jewelry from local designers. Aw, yeah! New World Designs is also a recognized safe place by the Vancouver Police Department as they are inclusive to all who wish to embrace this retro look. Don't live in Vancouver? Unfortunately, neither do I. Luckily, New World Designs now offers an online store. That's right. Head on over to nwdvan.com and she can ship your groovy new clothing right to your door. Still not satisfied? Tell your pals at Brutal Reality Digest sent you by using the coupon code STAYRAD and get a 10% discount. Now that's a spanking deal, folks. Once again, that's nwdvan.com or if you're lucky enough to live right in Vancouver, head on down to 434 West Hastings Street and say hello to Jen and her lovely crew. That's New World Design. Welcome to Brutal Reality Digest What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Brutal Reality Online Digest, I said that wrong, podcast, also known as Bird Drop. And I am pleased to welcome the Viking Lord himself, Vince Austin, to the show. How you doing, man? Hoof, hoof, hoof. What do you think I'm doing? Uh... How are you doing? <laughs> I'm hurting, man. It was It was Halloween last night, so I was... Getting into the wobbly pops. Do do you Nordic people celebrate Halloween? Halloween hangover is what we can call the next wrestling pay per view. <laughs> I don't know if anybody would want to see that if everyone's hungover. Ah, they'll come. We'll give them free beer. <laughs> Some hair of the dog. What's going on today, Mister Austin? Works. Good man. Good, good buddy. How are you? Well, aside from the from the hangover, I'm doing pretty well, man. It's a it's a very nice day here in Red Deer. Are you just up in Edmonton? I am. Yeah. I love Red Deer. It's a great place. Yeah, you've been you've been scrapping here for a while, then, eh? Yeah, yeah. Been for a few years. I've always liked this. It's a good town. It's a great town for wrestling. Hell yeah, man! So let's just let's get the folks at home up to speed here. In case you guys didn't know, you've been living under a rock. Vince is the BEW heavyweight champion of the world. Is that accurate? National heavyweight champion. National, not of the world. Sorry. National. I oversold you. Heavyweight champion. <laughs> Still important though. Yeah, hell yeah, man. How does that feel? Uh, pretty good. Enjoyed it. It was a good time. Yeah, man. I happened to Enjoyed be... hurting Jude Dawkins, that's for sure. <laughs> you got you have uh, some opinions about old Jude? Yeah, yeah. He's been copying my gimmick, copying me, wearing my kind of gear. Where... Look at him. It's like, a you know, the only thing original about Jude Dawkins is his fingerprint. I even question that. <laughs> oh, shots fired. So that's who you uh, happened to be at that match on uh, Thanksgiving Sunday, and you came on on top. It was kind of a battle royale, right? And is is Jude the last guy you had to get through? What do you mean? Like, did I have an advantage? Is that what you're trying to say? No, no, no. Listen, I came out there with Samantha Slides, and guess what happened? Jude Dawkins got Paul Draw down his skull, and I won the title fair and square. There was no interference. There was nothing weird going on. I pinned him clean. Right in the middle of the ring and embarrassed him in front of his hometown. Oh. Is that what you're talking about? Well, I guess it would depend on how you saw it. I mean, who, well, that's what I saw, and that's what everybody else saw. <laughs> why don't Why don't you like? Who is this Samantha? Tell us a bit about her. You mean to tell me you don't know who Samantha Slides is? I just just I saw like to slap you time. right now. <laughs> okay. Let me tell you something. Samantha Slides is a 22 year veteran of this sport. And I'm just going to leave it at that. Did she walk out or did she not walk out with the Women's National Championship that night? Yes or no? Yeah, she did. But yes. Uh... <laughs> right. Okay, that's the end of that story then. <laughs> well, That's why she's with me, okay? It doesn't need to be any more explanation. Well, how would you respond to people that think there might have been some extracurricular activities between you and Samantha that night? Maybe some not so Well, I think these people moves. need to get glasses. <laughs> 
Like, like honestly, they need a set of glasses because, like, if if they were at the same match I was at, they saw exactly what I'm telling you. Me, Snuff Paul driving Drew Dawkins on his head, dead center of the ring, then passed me the national heavyweight championship as the new and first BW champion. That's what everybody saw. Well, like, what's to argue about? Well, I guess it depends who you're talking to. <laughs> oh, you're from Red Deer, I guess, eh? You're taking Drew Dawkins' side on this. I, I get this now. This is like a one-sided interview. Gotcha. <laughs> let me tell you something. We're coming back here on December 12th, and Drew Dawkins is going to find out once again, not only has he ripped off my gimmick, my look, my gear, everything about the Viking Lord, but he's going to find out another lesson in humility when I snuff him once again dead center in the ring and keep my BW National Heavyweight Championship. That's what you're going to see again. But That's a promise? That's a guarantee. Write it down. In I'm, blood. I'm writing it down in blood as we speak. <laughs> so it'll be with Drew Dawkins' blood, and don't think that I won't be the one to draw first. I believe it, man. I've seen some of your matches on YouTube, and you seem to seem to leave a trail of blood. Even win or lose, there's, there's blood blood in the ring. I just destroyed Jason the Terrible. You ever hear tell of him from Stampede Wrestling? The monster Jason the Terrible. The legend, the hardcore icon. Yeah, you probably heard of him. He just lived under a rock somewhere. Well, he came, he tried to come back, and he tried to be a part of the hardcore tournament. And guess what happened? I snuffed him out and sent him right back to hell. <laughs> He's not around, is he? Who's wearing the hardcore belt? Still the Viking Lord. Wow. You got quite a bit of hardware at home. How many belts are you holding? Not right now? only am I, not only right now am I the BW National Heavyweight Champion, but I am that real Canadian wrestling hardcore champion. For years now, just reclaimed the title in another tournament. Once again, pinning Jason Terrible in the finals. A man who's been all over this globe, held all kinds of titles worldwide. Him, Slammer, out. Wow. Uh, all the rest that tried to step up to the plate in the last few years. You know, like, where are they? Most of them aren't even in the business. Or they got snuffed out by me and sent packing. <laughs> you sent them back to the unemployment line or the hospital? People say, like, like, listen, I'm sick of this shit. People keep saying, ah, oh, you're old, you're this shit. Have you seen what I look like? you see me in person, right? Yeah, of course. Do I look like an old, feeble guy to you? Absolutely I am not. ripped, and I am totally in the best shape of my life right now. And I will slap the shit out of any of these young fellas that think they can take this national title from me or that hardcore belt. I'm not screwing around. Let's just get that straight right now. I believe it, man. You got you got the thirst in you to hang on to that title. I'm going to retire that belt before one of those idiots takes it on me. You can be assured of that. I'll give Jude Dawkins credit, though, one thing. At least he had the balls to come at me full force. With everything he had, but he still still couldn't get the job done, and that's the sweetest part of it all. Yeah, he's good for that. <laughs> so, well, so, no, he's good. He's better than good. He's awesome. I'll give him that. And he's a hell of a wrestler. I mean, let's not let's not fool around here. Let's be honest. He's a hell of a wrestler. Probably the best in the province, uh, and who knows, maybe Canada. Definitely one of the best up and coming. Once again, bring it on. <laughs> one more victim for me to snuff out. With. And right in the end, was it the books of victory? Yeah, you got this, man. So, so I have seen you in person, and maybe the people listening haven't. But you wear an eye patch, man. What happened? Do you, do you want to talk about that? Are you going to make fun of my eye now? <laughs> of course not. Make the rest I'm of concerned. these idiots, huh? I'm concerned. Let me tell you something. Do you honestly want to know what happened to my eye? I do. Well, it's on the internet, okay? Viking Lord versus Kevin Sullivan, the Taskmaster. Ever heard of a guy named Kevin Sullivan? I have. No? Yeah, well, he's not a very nice guy. He's been in WCW, ECW, NWA, Smoky Mountain. I mean, we could just go on. Japan, FMW. Came in here, and we were just about to put him out for good. Me and my brother, the Saltwater Savage, the Viking Rage, were about to snuff him out. And guess what? I got stabbed in the eye. Stabbed in my eye. With and now, with a fork. With a fork that he brought into the ring. And you know something? To this day, 
I still have 34% of my vision missing in my right eye because of him. In my eye! Oh, my God. Shit. Did you get revenge? It's not about revenge. It is what it is. The time will come to your place for that matter to be resolved. Well, you, you're talking about a fork. So is this a different time than that the dreaded cage match in Springbrook when you yourself found yourself with a fork? Oh, when I almost ended Stephen Stahl's life. So it was a different and time. And bled him out in the cage, huh? Is that what you're talking about? When they almost had to get a, take him to the hospital for a blood transfusion? That might have been yeah. the time. Yeah, that was me. I don't like Stephen Stahls. I don't like you. I don't like anybody. You understand? Yeah, I understand it. It's deserved. <laughs> People think this is all fooling around, but there's no fooling around until the bell rings, and then you find out the hard way. It's called snuff paw dropper written in your skull. Is that your finisher? <laughs> you better believe it. It is the finisher, my friend. Once I hit that, it's all over. Nobody can get up from that. Especially not Jude Dawkins. Especially Jude Dawkins. I've seen him doing a version of it, trying to, once again, rob what I have created. <laughs> and I can guarantee you, that Paul driver he's doing ain't nothing to what I can do. He's been looking at my moves from day one. He's been stealing everything I've got to throw out there in the wrestling world. But at the end of the day, you know what? You can only copy something so much. You'll never duplicate it perfectly. And that's what he's trying to do is duplicate that Paul driver, that finishing move. Too bad he's not even close to it. No. So what's, what? how quickly do you think you're going to get rid of him then on December 12th? What are you predicting? Uh, let's not be stupid here, okay? I'm not taking him lightly. I'm not taking Jew doctors lightly. You'd have to be an idiot to take someone like him lightly. Have you looked at him? He's strong as a grudge. I've seen He's him. strong as an ox, man. He will plow through you. He'll break your ribs. He'll gore you right through the post. I know Drew Dawkins. Yeah, he's, a, he's good. He's real good. Am I going to finish him off on December 12th and pin him in the ring again and keep my national heavyweight championship? Just as Odin looks down, you can be sure of it. I believe him, man. I'm, I can't wait, personally. Even though you don't like me, I'm going to be cheering you on. Uh I never said I hated you. <laughs> um, you're growing on me just a little bit so far. So. <laughs> well, that's good, man. I've been. Uh... I tolerate you at this moment. Okay, that's, that's that's all I can hope for in life is for people to tolerate me. You know. <laughs> I've been watching some of your videos, and you mentioned this guy, your your tag team partner. Is he still around? My brother is back in the all in Newfoundland right now, and I got two people with me right now. And a lot of things going on lurking in the background that nobody seems to realize. If CG Savage stepped up to the plate, anybody that tries to come towards me got to try to go towards him. Good luck with that. And as, as I said before, Samantha Slides, you think you're going to come out and pull the fast one? You think she's just going to go in there and lay down, drop that belt, to any chick that comes in there? <laughs> Good luck. You know what's going to happen then? They're going to get dropped on their heads and embarrassed and pinned. And that's how that's going to play out. You can write that in the books. Okay, writing it down. So I was w- watching some of your YouTube videos, and you had a little uh, dwarf buddy. Is he still around? You mean that little that little uh, blinking midget that we had? Yeah. No, he, he, he crossed the line. Did you see that video? Huh? It says, blinking rage almost kill midget wrestler. I didn't see that we one. We almost killed him. We almost ended his life. Do I feel bad about it? No. She was ended. What happened? Hey, Odin. Crossed us. Didn't learn his lesson in humility, but he found out the hard way. When I snuck Paul, drove him on a table, and then almost literally ended his life. Hey, Odin. He doesn't come around anymore? <laughs> you showed him the way. Done with the Viking rage. I sent him packing. I'm in a coffin in a body bag. Holy shit. That's a, that's a lesson we can all learn. Don't cross the, the Viking Lord. Don't cross the Viking Rage or the Army of Darkness. Hell yeah. Because man. that's what you're seeing right in front of your eyes forming now, show after show. 
is a legion of individuals that rise above everybody else with a sicker agenda in mind. And there truly is an army of darkness rising. Just like the world has turned dark and everybody's scared, everybody feels panic and anxiety. But when you hear that music click in, saying anger, and they say Viking raids, the army of darkness, the whole mood changes. And it's an ugly mood, a mood of fear, a mood of terror, and a mood of violence, strictly violence. Every single time. So that's what we have to expect on December twenty or de- December twelfth. It's gonna be December twelfth. I advise anybody there that's coming to it, come up and witness the end of Drew Dawkins. That's it, eh? Burying him that night. We're gonna sacrifice him to the gods. And he's gonna be find out that copying me all these years was a big mistake. A huge mistake. One that's going to cost me his career, professional wrestling. Yeah, you you heard it here first, folks. Jude Dawkins, game over on December 12th at Festival Hall in Red Deer. Shit, man. I don't even know what else to say. I think you covered it all. We should all be very afraid of what you got cooking. Everybody should be afraid because the entire mood's about to change to a darker, somber mood on December 12th. Don't expect Santa Claus to come there and save anybody. You best remember, the Viking Rage is hell marching right into Red Deer. And we're going to snuff out you, Dawkins. Shit. Is there anybody you like that's going to be there, or you hate them all? All the other wrestlers. Anybody that tries to step in that ring and challenge for that BW National Heavyweight title is putting their life out of mind. All I can tell you, I ain't planning on dropping that to anybody. All right, man. I think I think you got your point across. Don't fuck And just you. like the gods look down, Lord Odin himself, and they see an act of war amongst men. They nod their heads in approval for the Viking Lord and the Viking Rage and the Army of Darkness as it approaches mankind. Hey, ho, Odin. Is it, you got a final message then for the folks at home? Before I let you get on with your night? Because you're going to be destroyed on December 12th, June, at the hands of the Viking Rage. <laughs> All right, man. Well, thanks for taking the time to have a little chat with me. I had a good time. I hope you, uh, you're you feeling better. I'll be seeing you on the 12th. And don't think for a second that I'm not going to come up and strangle you with my chain. Because that very well could happen if I don't like this interview. You understand? Hey, man. Bring you, it on. You're here. I'll see you all on December 12th. And as for two Dawkins, it's over. Hail, Odin. All right, buddy. I'll see you on the 12th. I'll I'll keep my guard up. Well, Viking Lord? Are are you there, buddy? Oh, what the... Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Brutal Reality Digest Online Podcast, also known as Bird Job. As you may have heard, this event has actually been postponed till the new year, but you know why we released it anyways, because the Viking Lord never sleeps. Until next time, stay brutal.